Hi everyone, it's not much of an update, it's, uh, it's just a short video regarding a uh, question that someone's asked on YouTube um, which is JVRT64, so I believe his name's John so John, um, you wanted to find out how did these, um, this staging in here, I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick load I'm not going to clear it all off, I'll just try and show you best I can you know, um, how I actually did it, so let's have a look right so basically got two bits of timber this one and this one over here right they're 10 foot long and then what I did with that is try and look underneath here so you can see underneath I put uh, screwed a button here all the way across there I did that you know probably about every 18 inch two foot another one there another one here there's two more down there now on my polytunnel I already had a piece of wood which is this one here which is screwed to the frame comes all the way around I've also got another piece of timber and you can see down below here which is goes from my frame across to me door frame so it's just basically a timber outline all the way around so the actual shelf itself you can see sits on a piece of wood there which you just screw to the door frame the same at both ends and then in the middle just to stop it bowing depends how long it's going to be I've just put a piece of wood that I've screwed to the front it goes down the bottom here that stops it from bending in the middle and the full length across the back is just fixed with screws about every 14 15 inches screw there and screw there we're right the way along the back so once I've got the the outline you know the two the two sides and the strips run underneath I got some this is slate batten this this is about um, it's 25 by 50 mil timber this this is thinner stuff I think it's probably maybe 40 mil by 18 or something like I can't remember if I'm I cut the strips and I laid them across and I just sort of guessed the spaces you know just spaced them out and I just put small screws just to help, you don't have to put screws, you can just have these loose if you want which go right the way along the way along under there you know and it's pretty sturdy so when I want to come and take this out all I have to do is remove them two screws there which will take this leg off and there's about six screws which are along the back take them out and then I can just lift it out and put it out away from my tomato plants and then I can put it on something in the autumn and hang my onions through it as a drying rack. So, uh, just a, a brief video for John. Um, what else have I been up to? I've been planting loads of stuff at the allotment, seedlings and stuff, and a lot of it's been nailed by cutworms. Um, if you've not experienced cutworms, if you go and find a brassica like this, laid on the floor, it's cut off right at the base. It's a cutworm. Um, there's a way you can stop it. I've never had to use it before, but I might have to this time. That's uh, use plastic drinking straws, and you cut a piece. You know, probably I don't know about an inch, to two inches long, and you, and you cut a slit down that. And you leave that around your stem, so it's part in the ground, and part above it. So as, as your cabbage grows, it will push the straw apart. Don't worry about it, because uh, just this time of year, the cutworms are really rife at the moment. They're being, you know, still early in the year. So, uh, right. I will be putting another video on soon because I've been, been in the allotment today planting peas and parsnips and all sorts. I've just needed to get loads done so I've not had the camera there with me. So uh, there will be an update coming within the next week. So I uh, hope that helped you out John. And uh, thanks to everyone else for subscribing and watching all your comments. And uh, Tony's allotment, that's looking great. So uh, well done you Tony. Right, take care and I'll see you next video. Bye.